February 12th, 2009. COVID 3407, Cassia Tower, went to 0.5. Have a good night. A disaster forever etched into Western New York history. 50 lives lost as flight 3407 crashed in Clarence Center. I remember thinking to myself, I know he's dead, but I'm going to hold him one more night. Tonight, we remember the one on the ground. Sunday marks eight years since the crash, but the memories are still as vivid as ever for those who lost loved ones on the ill-fated flight. Karen Walensky lost both her husband and her home that tragic night. She's documenting her thoughts in a new book as she tries to make sense of her new life amid the loss. Ed Dranch reports on her emotional journey. I thought I was prepared to view this new reenactment. Karen Wylinski was glued to the timer. 60 seconds remained, closer and closer. My heart beat faster and faster. A vision flashed in my mind. On the ground, Doug, Jill, and I were oblivious to what was about to occur. But by now, we would have paused and wondered, what is that? It was Continental Connection Flight 3407, stalling before crashing into the Wylinski's Clarence Center home. She recalls the sound in her new book, a sound that still haunts her eight years after the crash. Every time a plane goes over, yeah, I still, I still like stop in my tracks and just kind of wait. Even the wind reminds Walensky of what she lost, her house and her husband, Doug, often referred to as the one on the ground. The day after the crash, my daughter and I were, um, we had put the TV on. Welcome to World News and the headlines air tragedy. That was New the first time I guess that... I saw where, you know, how many people were on the plane. The crash site was an inferno. All 49 passengers and crew were killed, as was one person on the ground. And one on the ground. It always seemed to me, not that it was an intentional thing, but that Doug was kind of like an afterthought. And that is the title of the book, One on the Ground. Karen writes about the bond she now has with the families of the other 49 victims. But at first, she says, she didn't feel connected. There'll always be that difference. Doug was not on the plane. He was by himself. And the fact that Jill and I survived that, I mean, that just makes it a different situation for us, too. Karen remembers her husband as a man with a heart of gold. He was one of the good guys, she wrote, a great loving father to his girls and the best person for me to share my life with. He was kind of like a soulmate, I guess you would say. And um, life is definitely different without him. Some of their memories were salvaged from the site, now kept in the basement. One more. In plastic boxes. Part of Doug's um, Buffalo <laughs> memorabilia. Doug was an avid collector of all things Buffalo, sports and history. From newspapers to stadium seats, what was found at the site was tagged, itemized and boxed with an eerie reminder of the crash. Her childhood doll was even found amid the chaos. But to sort through it all. How can I just put everything behind me? I can't, you know, I can't. Memories of Long Street are still with Wylinski. As you're walking down that path, you're going to see indentations. And I can walk on that path and say, that was the living room, that was the dining room. An angel sits where her house once stood. It is the scene of a dream about Doug. I remember thinking to myself, I know he's dead, but I'm going to hold him one more night. I escaped to the land of make-believe now and again to lessen the pain of losing Doug. A remedy for my loneliness, but only a temporary fix. Her pain is palpable. But for Wylinski, writing this book was a way to cope. Looking back, one more set. <laughs> Looking back, those ordinary Saturdays were really quite extraordinary. Perhaps in time, I will feel that way again. A cathartic tribute to her late husband, who was more than just one on the ground. And that's what you'll find in the book. <laughs> Some of the proceeds from sales of Karen's new book will go toward the scholarship fund set up in Doug's name. One on the ground is due out next month. Edge Ranch, 7 Eyewitness News.